I have an assistant this morning. I'm going to read from Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So he formed it into another pot, shaping as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like the clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation, I warn, repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time that I announce a nation or a kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now that seems a little intense, God telling us he's going to build us or break us. But I want you to focus more on the theme of being created and recreated by God. And so I want to read Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my laying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes behold my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, and yet none of them had yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I tried to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Yes, God knows us and loves us individually and as a church family. Now this morning, I brought some clay with me. I'm sure that everyone here has at some point in their life played with clay or Play-Doh. Do you know what you call someone who forms things from clay? A potter. A potter. That's correct. It was in the Bible passage you were listening. Very good. Uh, Let's be a potter and see what we can make of this piece of clay. Here, take one. What can you make from that? You might make a cup or a bowl. You could mold it into the shape of an animal. You might start out to make a bowl and then change it into something else. You can easily reshape that clay. Now, I want to make sure that everybody gets a piece. Pass them out. Go. Everybody's going to get one. Now, I think it would be a challenge to hold this little piece of clay and not mold it in some way. Possible, but it would be a challenge. But I encourage you to give in. Feel it. Create with it. Knead it. Hold it. Whatever works for you. Okay? We're going to make sure that everybody gets one. Don't tell Ramona I used a kitchen knife to cut it. I washed it, I promise. I did wash it, I did. What's that? I did not sanitize it, don't tell. We'll have to get to that. It's in the dish rack. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna help. Can anybody resist molding it? I mean, it's just in your hand, you just gotta do it, right?
It'll come off your fingers. As you work it a little bit, it gets better. It won't be too messy. That's why we shook hands before this. Everybody got one? Oh, you got one already. All right. Cup, bowl, snake, ball, whatever you want to make out of it. <laughs> it's hard not to play with it, isn't it? Now, in Isaiah 64, verse 8, it says, We are the clay. God is the potter. And we are the work of God's hand. Now, the Bible doesn't call us bricks or rocks or something that's already finished being made. I think it's because God is always molding us and changing us. God wants us to be in the process of growing. God's teaching us. God's disciplining us. We are changed by people and happenings in our lives that help to mold us. Even when bad things happen to, the, to us or those around us, the bad times change and shape us. What happens to clay when you leave it out? It gets hard and brittle, falls apart. Do you think God will ever be finished with us and turn us into a hardened piece of clay? I don't think so. Now sometimes what we're doing to the clay may not be comfortable. Sometimes things that are happening to us are uncomfortable. Think of the clay that you have. You've already squeezed it, pinched it, rolled it, probably pulled it in half, right? Probably not very comfortable for the clay. I see some people stabbing it, not comfortable for the clay. But it's already better looking than when it was handed to you. It's smoother on the edges. It's rough places are, are made smooth. How much better is it to allow God to mold and shape us into the person or the church God wants us to be? The great thing is that when we allow God to mold and shape our lives, God will turn us into a wonderful work of art. God has a plan for our lives. But just as the clay, we need to be willing to let God do that. We can't jump off the table and run away to avoid being shaped or pounded or molded or flattened. We need a lot of molding to work and work to become more loving, more giving, more compassionate, more like Jesus. And just, and, and just as a potter handles the clay roughly, banging it around, mixing it up, creating an ultimate design that's planned for the piece of clay. So God's work in our lives may not be easy. It might even be painful sometimes. Stabbed, pounded, rolled, pinched. God is patiently making us into something beautiful, and we need only to let God do that work. Now, what do you think this activity might tell us about God in our lives? And I really want you to answer what do you think that this activity, holding this clay, might be able to tell us? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get it into the shape we want, right? It's not easy. I like to roll it into a ball and then I get irritated when it's not perfect. Okay? I doubt, it, I doubt God gets irritated with me in that same way. Why do you think God wants to mold us? Do we need changing? All the time. Right. Why would God want to do that? Why would God waste the time changing us from who we think we should be to who God wants us to be? Oops. Why is it better for us to be like clay and be pliable? Trust God. Be willing to change. Okay. What are things in life that mold us or shape us? What are some things that mold us in life? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Events. The people. The experiences we have. The experiences we make for others. Teachers? Yes. Yeah. All of those things shape us. Some of them are painful. 
We lost a friend this week. It's painful. But it changes us and shapes us and hopefully brings us closer to the person that God wants us to be. Sometimes it's difficult to allow God to mold us. It doesn't feel great to be told through prayer, through time, oh, you know, maybe you should be at open table. Maybe you should be doing this. Maybe you should be doing that. That call you hear in the middle of the night, it's God saying, I think you might need to make a change. Or here's the answer you've been seeking, and maybe you don't want to hear it. Who wants to share what they've molded this morning? Anybody mold anything spectacular? Unremarkable? Yeah. Awesome, Jill. Awesome. What else? Snake. Nice. Nice. We'll call it a snake, not a serpent, right? What do you have, Deb? A flower. Nice. Tree. Beautiful creations, all people. I think that's a velociraptor. Yes? Oh, what's Jan got? (laughs) Of course, of course. Beautiful creations. Think about how God was creating us. Each different, each unique, each fantastical. Not a single one unremarkable. These are rock shaped. That's pretty awesome. Right? They're rocks. Right? Now what I encourage us to do, and you can take this clay home or you can leave it here. Liam would be glad to play with it. If you leave it out, it will dry. You can put it on the dashboard of your car. You can put it in your kitchen windowsill to remind you that God isn't finished with us. We are wonderfully and fearfully made by God, but there is work to do. There is work to be done. Let us stay soft and squishy, right? Not the getting in shape message that you thought you might get if you were reading the bulletin, right? Stay soft and squishy because that keeps you open to God so God can keep working in our lives. Thank you.